And here we are. Coming up into the attic. We are going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff today. So, welcome to the Super Pilotish channel. Hey, look at that. We got lights up in the attic. Isn't that something cool? Yep, so what I'm going to be talking about here is, well, just this video is... Hello, hello. There's me waving. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a little bit of Ethernet cable uh, installation in my house. It's a hundred year old house and here I am up in the attic and I'm gonna be uh, just kinda I don't know uh, doing a little bit of a a little bit of a chit chat here and describing what I'm doing and, and uh, it'll be a little bit different than your usual hey guys this is the easy way to put in your Ethernet cable you see videos like that and it just seems to like oh wow that's easy <laughs> but in actual fact this took me hours and hours and hours to do and uh, because uh, I wouldn't say that I'm an exact uh, expert on this but look at that oh what an attractive looking attic so uh, yeah so I'm not really an expert on this stuff but I'm gonna do my best and uh, the uh, uh, I guess the too long didn't read too long didn't watch thing is uh, yeah it works <laughs> so I do have uh, working Ethernet in the the one bedroom that I ran the uh, cat5 Ethernet cable to so I'll just kind of describe what I'm doing here uh, you can see on the right that jiggly wire that's a uh, trouble lamp and I plugged in my hammer drill yeah, it's working and plugged in the hammer drill in right into the lamp it's got a you can plug it in and I'm kind of crawling down I'm crawling down here on some 2x4s that I nailed into the ceiling uh, it's kind of a, a slanted part that goes over top of some stairs and I'm just kind of cleaning out here you can see I got my gloves on I got my mask on it's uh, pretty dusty up in these old attics um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of I'm kind of examining the uh, what, what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so and uh, so first of all, we're gonna pop a hole into this uh, chimney. Now it's uh, well. Let's see how this goes. Hammer drill time. Stop. Hammer drill time. Do 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 do. And. Here we go. Yeah, just just had to pop a little hole there into the mortar. If I was drilling through the brick, it would take a lot longer. But I just stuck a little hole through there. And uh, so now I'm gonna I'm going to see if I can uh, drop a uh, a weight on a string and. That should go all the way down to the basement. And uh, I'm seeing how far I went in there. So this, this chimney has a liner in it. Uh, it's a chimney that we, uh, there's a little metal liner that they put in there for the, um, uh, the hot water heater in the basement. And you'll see that a little bit later. And uh, yeah, so I was trying to figure out how am I gonna get this uh, wire from the basement all the way up to the attic so you can also see I don't know if you can tell but there's actually a, a vent pipe for the sink uh, that goes all the way from the basement up to the attic and I tried fooling around with fish tape and other stuff and I tried I thought maybe I could uh, run the wire up beside the uh, the vent pipe for the sink that wouldn't work and then I tried to do it by the uh, the, the vent pipe uh, for the bathroom for the <laughs> every toilet has a vent pipe and, uh, and that was no go so I figured okay time to drill a hole into this uh, this chimney that's uh, it's uh, it, 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 it's okay to do that because it's uh, the, it's not like it's a fireplace uh, where it would be leaking out and you don't want to be running wires through fireplaces that's for sure 
And uh, so here I, I, bought, I bought this new string, this new twine. It's, uh, what is it, a two ply? Oh, and there was a little jump cut there too because it took me forever to uh, try to get the, the string, uh, <laughs> to get the string off. And uh, I was fooling around and fooling around. I cut out probably about two or three minutes of me just messing around with this dumb string trying to get it. They, I guess they melted it on, it's nylon. And so I thought, okay, that's not working. I got out my utility knife and we're gonna try to get this brand new string. Uh, it's a two ply and basically I kind of figured out here that I, I, I wish I would have had maybe a little thicker string, a little thicker twine because uh, you'll, you'll see in a little bit later when I'm pulling it back through the mortar and through the bricks, uh, it was wearing out the I, I could tell it was uh, kind of wearing the string out and uh, so I didn't want to snap it so here I am I'm measuring here there's each arm spans about six feet so there we go we got 12 feet and 18 feet and plus six is uh, 24 feet of string 30 that's probably enough to get it all the way down to the basement and then we'll go ah, 30 I'm thinking hmm okay yeah I will go one more 36 feet that should definitely get down there and uh, I just didn't want it to be I don't know I, I've always found with uh, anything like a string or rope or cord or wire uh, don't go cheap on it you know just make sure you make sure you use a whole lot of it and uh, okay so then I'm gonna be attaching my weight onto there so now this is something that they don't usually show you in in YouTube videos they don't show all this oh man this is uh, this is a pain in the butt and oh this is taken forever okay this is my little weight that I found it's got a hole through it it's a little pipe fitting and uh, I got that and uh, just found it in the basement it was lying around some little pipe fitting and then I thought, well, I'm going to be really cool here and I'm going to put a bowling knot on there because I, I, in one of my previous videos, I was teaching myself how to do a bowling knot. And here I took off the glasses because uh, is, uh, it's a, it was a little bit cold up in the attic and uh, my glasses were fogging up anyways. So, uh, so now I'm trying to put this string on here and like YouTube videos don't show you this this is the real deal this is actually how long it takes and how people you'll see me make mistakes and I cut out uh, hours and hours of mistakes here and th this is going to be a long uh, it's going to be a long video but yeah well hopefully somebody will learn something from it and uh, I definitely learned something by doing it myself and uh, so it, in any, uh, I don't know, uh, home renovation or working on your car or anything, the, the first time you do it, it takes forever. And then after that, eh, it gets better. Uh, so, I mean, like doing the first, if you got a brand new motorcycle and you do an oil change on it, the first time you do it, it's probably going to take you like four hours. But then the next time you do it, it might only be one. So, because you're like, oh. <laughs> what wrench do I use? Oh, is that the one? Uh, I don't know. So here I'm trying to be all cool doing a bowling knot, which is probably not even necessary or the proper knot to do it. But I kind of wanted to practice, uh, wanted to practice doing my bowling knot. Eventually I got it, and uh, that just makes a loop. And there we go. I'm testing it. It's uh, hey, it is secure. And try to put the glasses back on, and I'm still fogging up. Uh, no good. So I was. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is really kind of funny that uh, you know you're gonna watch me mess around here for some dumb little hole, and uh, like the the masonry bit that I had on the drill that was just one I had lying around, and I probably should have uh, instead of using a thick fitting like that I should have just used a, like a little like a three inch nail or something like that and here this is uh, this is a good example of uh, do as I say not as I do because I don't have any eye protection 
and I am using a drill so that's a big huge no-no <laughs> but I figured I, I just had to make the hole a little bit bigger and I thought I could just kind of just kind of scrape it out with the side of the drill a little bit with the flutes of the drill maybe you make it a little bit bigger and of course it doesn't work <laughs> so <laughs> I gotta go and do it again and uh, still too small and hey maybe I can what can else what else can I do here uh, I don't know let's try it again and again and again and uh, see like this is this is how long it actually takes you to mess around just to drop a string and I'm like checking it out here where is that what's the, what's the diameter of the pipe fitting what's the diameter of my drill it's almost uh, side size for size And then I get a, I don't know. Eventually I start going nuts on it. Well, not really too nuts. And uh, yeah, so I, <laughs> I'll try this again. And you, you know, see, this is the type of quality programming you get at the Super Pilotish channel because you get to, because you get to see people actually make mistakes and take like a really long time to do something simple. But that's that's realistic, man. And will I eventually get this dumb little weight through this hole? And of course, I'm uh, realizing that this has taken a long time, and you, the, the stress levels going up, tension levels going up, getting a little more ticked off. I don't know if you can hear me swearing under my breath probably not but uh how big is this thing so i got my flashlight and i'm taking a look uh do i have to do this again yeah oh, boy yeah all right now let's just give her i'm getting getting ticked off here and let's see what happens here Now that time I actually used the, uh, uh, on a masonry bit, the end of it is uh, carbide. So uh, the carbide, that's what actually, that's the, that's the tough part of the drill that will take off the, uh, any of your cement or rock or whatever you're drilling into. The, 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 metal, uh, the metal flutes on the side, of course, don't do very much. Um, Okay, and oh, did I get ticked off and did it again? I guess I did. Or let's see how. Oh no, that was it. I used the uh, the drill to sort of coerce and coax the weight into the hole. And now I think I got it, and I'm gonna be just kind of dropping it down. And I can feel it. I can feel it getting a little bit. Um, uh, well, kind of falling down. Now I can just feed the string in. I feed the twine in and it's going down 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 and this is like one of the uh, one of the things when you when you're doing your home renovations you have uh, your high now I guess you'd, you'd say you'd have your high points and your low points so this is the high point so it's like all right I got it finally but I still have hours and hours to go <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, so I just kind of, it takes a little while to drop it down the hole. So I'm up in the attic here, and then we have the second floor to go through, the main floor to go through, and then a little bit into the uh, basement. So I would guess probably 25 feet or so. And uh, put the old glasses back on. Are they going to fog up? Who knows? I think I uh, get the uh, gloves out. You'll you'll find me putting on gloves, taking off gloves. I try to keep the gloves on. Just I don't know, cause it's it's pretty dusty and filthy uh, uh, up in the attic with a hundred years worth of dust and stuff. And you can see I got my knee pads on there. Uh, it's always good to have uh, some sort of knee pads if you're gonna be crawling around. 
uh, and I, there's not a whole lot of room up in the attic, so I got to be on all fours most of the time. And here we go. Now we're down at the basement. See the little thing I'm taking off? That you can see the the, the paint is um, is all kind of chipped away because it had been painted over. Look at that! I found the string and my little fitting. Ta-da! It worked. So that was another reason why I wanted to uh, drop it down the chimney because I found this little door, uh, but it was all painted shut. And in any old house, you're gonna find that if you have like a window or this little clean out vent, or I guess it would be some sort of a clean out that was put in there, um, you would, uh, if it's painted over, usually you just get a utility knife uh, and just give it a slice and you'll be able to maybe open a window that's been painted shut or this little thing here. It had, oh, I don't know how many coats of <laughs> lead and oil paint and whatever on it, but uh, I kind of had to chip away at it with a, uh, I just used a, a flathead screwdriver and a little hammer and just kind of tapped at it and ticked at it and, and it, it, it kind of all chipped off, so that's why it looks a little rough. But it's an unfinished basement. I kind of don't care what it looks like. <laughs> Actually, unfinished basements are really good uh, for doing work in. Uh, so here I am. I'm attaching the Cat5 uh, cable to the string. And uh, no fancy nuts today. <laughs> I'm not doing any bowlins again. That was too much of a pain in the butt. So you can see how I folded it over and I'm gonna wrap it all up with electrical tape so I can use the string up in the attic and then pull the wire up through the chimney and you can see just in the I guess lower right of the screen that's the hot water heater and the hot water heater uh, it uh, it's a gas a natural gas heater so th that's why we had to put the uh, the little sleeve uh, the little sleeve into the um, the chimney and because uh, uh, I guess that's the building code these days says you got to do that and uh, so I got a little bit of room around that and that's where I could put my wire to go up and yep using lots of tape and uh, that's another thing too if you're doing home renovations don't go shy on your electrical tape don't go shy uh, you know don't go cheap on your wires uh, always get way more than you need because you're gonna you're gonna use a bunch and then you don't want to be running and usually whenever you're you run out of something it's on a Sunday and the hardware store is closed or it's uh, too late at night or too early in the morning it, it's always at a bad time or it's uh, maybe a rainy day or a snowy day or a super hot day and you don't feel like getting out of the house and so there we go we got lots of uh, now this is uh that's it's pretty stiff and it's pretty uh how would i call that it's pretty stiff and uh, not too flexible but i'm, I'm kind of feeding the cat5 uh, that's your ethernet you know, internet wire it's low voltage so you don't have to uh, you don't have to do it's the same as an electrical cord yeah so there's a big box cat 5 e and you can see it uh, it'll just pull right out of the box and uh, yeah so uh, it you can pull it and pull it and it just keeps coming out of the box and that was another thing too that I did when I bought that wire uh, it was 500 feet of wire and you you always think oh I'm not going to use that much well if you have a house and you live in it for a few years there's going to be some other project and there's some other little thing and you're, you're going to be happy you didn't go cheap on your wire and we'll feed it up here. And now I'm gonna show off my fantastic editing skills. Look at that. Uh, this is a little split screen editing uh, that I wanted to do. So I wanted to show, uh, so I got one camera upstairs. You can see how I'm pulling the wire through. Whoop, there we go. And uh, eventually that wire should come right out of the chimney on top because the string is coming out 
But this is where I get into a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a hiccup in my plans where uh, I want to want to pull it and now like hey what well, this is it's stuck on something oh yeah and I, I didn't really anticipate that it would have to bend 90 it would have to bend 90 degrees to get uh, to get out of the hole again so here we go time to start pulling out the hair some more and uh, <laughs> and okay I got this cool little flashlight and I just clipped it on the edge and uh, so I could aim it at the hole and see what I'm doing and uh, I really hate working when I can't see what I'm doing if you're working anywhere it's always great to have lots of light and then uh, yeah so this is also uh, to do this little split screen this is the first time I ever did it and this video really I mean it hopefully it'll help somebody out to hook up some Ethernet cable uh, get their internet going faster but it was also an exercise for me to, it's the biggest project I've ever done so far uh, for video editing. And, uh, yep, there we go. This is kind of where it's stuck, I guess. And I want to refund it and get it out. But this is where it's rubbing up against the cement. And now my string is getting thinned out. And I don't want to reef it too hard. Because if the string breaks, well... Then I have to pull the wire back through to, to the basement, drop the string through again, blah, blah, blah. So here, there was just some wire that was lying around. I was like, okay, is I don't feel like looking for any special tools or anything, but there's uh, it's just regular 14 gauge wire. It was, it's, not, it's not electrical. I'm not gonna electrocute myself. It was just a little coil of wire. And I thought, well, maybe I could kind of poke that in there or Help, maybe this could help me, I don't know, I, I could maybe uh, scrape off a little bit more, uh, a little bit more cement, a little mortar, maybe make the hole bigger, uh, I don't know. But all I know here is that, you know, here I'm feeling to, uh, uh, feeling around like, is, is this thing actually stuck? Is it like, what's going on? And start pulling out the hair. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and then it's hard to see, and then, okay, how am I going to do this? And so this is what they don't show you in most YouTube videos. Getting all frustrated. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then if you'll notice that, yeah, the video quality is a little different. Um, I think uh, I made a mistake. I'm pretty sure uh, when I was used my one camera... And I recorded it. I recorded at a frame rate of I think it was 60. Uh, was it 60 frames per second? And then the one on the bottom uh, that was just off my phone on a stand, and that's 30 frames per second. It's just yeah. So it, like it looks a little grainier, and I think eventually I changed that, and the video quality improves, but. I'm not going to go redo the whole job just so you can get a better uh, a better shot. I guess I probably should have said uh, at the beginning, don't adjust your set, <laughs> don't adjust your computer. This is that's problems on my end. Yep. So I'm going to try poking around, and will this wire thing even help me out? Is it even worth it? and messing around messing around so now i put a little curve in the wire and i was thinking okay if i have the wire there uh the the little electrical 14 gauge wire and i put the string on top of it there's a little bit of a channel so i won't wear out the string anymore and maybe that would help guide it uh because there's a bit of a radius a little bit of a curve in the wire maybe i can get it out uh and uh, it won't be such a sharp uh, sharp corner so let's see how I do did my little plan work maybe I don't know well I know it did but <laughs> I'm not sure how long this video is going so uh, yeah just still more fooling around and did I get it? Yep, there you go.
the wire is now up into the attic and now I can pull it through and once you're pulling it through this is what a regular YouTube channel would show you hey look how we how, look how easy it is I'm just pulling it up like this all you have to do is that and uh, so here we are still pulling some wire all right thumbs up we got it give it one more little yank and turn off the flashlight now we got to run this wire all over the place and try to get it into okay this is another angle of the uh, the attic so I'm gonna have to it's, it's got a really shallow roof up there and uh, I have to get this wood I got some plywood lying around and I just keep it up in the attic so if I ever have to lay down on the uh, on the rafters or joists or whatever you would call it uh, so my feet don't so I don't fall through the ceiling on the second floor uh, I have this uh, plywood up and I also made like a, you can see it's kind of a gray blue uh, plywood flooring I don't know I'm gonna be crawling on uh, I, I nailed that right down because uh, and I also installed lights up in the attic uh, you can see that one light behind uh, with my crazy hair <laughs> and uh, so that makes it easier to work too hello anyone in there okay so I gave uh, I don't know, I'm just always doing waves and bums ups and stuff like that. Okay, so I got I got my my plywood and I, I just kind of rested on top of the 2x4s that are there uh, by the ceiling. And we're going to put that, that's what I'm going to have to lay on. And you can see there's a, a wire that I ran before, uh, previously on the right. It's on a newer piece of wood and it's newer wiring so that the outlet in that bedroom was grounded so here I am on my belly uh, trying to I got I have to drill a hole through so that I can get behind the wall in the bedroom and drop the wire down so you can see on the top also that there's a bunch of na roofing nails sticking through there so I got to watch my head so I don't <laughs> gash my head open with these nails and then let's try drilling through. This is just some regular auger bit that I had lying in the basement. It's it's not a uh, not a hammer drill here at this point. Hey, okay, made it through some two by fours, and I have no idea really where I am <laughs> in the wall. Uh, you can see that white wire that goes down to an outlet. And the hole that I drilled was about 16 inches away, which is uh, most of your uh, studs are 16 inches apart. And I also wanted to see how deep my hole went. I thought, I'm pretty sure at this point that I got all the way through to some sort of a cavity behind the wall. And I'm just gonna kind of measure. I figured even if there was two two by fours there, you know, if I could get it down. Okay, I've got my hand there and I figure if I can and it, I, I could feel that there was a, uh, a stud that I was hitting with that and it, it, it went through about six inches so I figured okay that's cool and here I am now time to drop another string okay so this time I got a three inch nail and I put some electrical tape on it and some more string and I spared you uh, all of this footage that I shot before because this is actually my second attempt at doing this so what I did before was I I just stuck a whole bunch of wire through the hole hoping for the best and I I just couldn't get it on the other side so this is I think it's the next day and I uh, yeah I wasted a whole bunch of time not doing it the right way with the string with the weight and uh, so I'm dropping it down, waiting for it to, uh, I'm just kind of waiting for it to bottom out, I guess. And then like, I figured that'd be cool. And then I also attached the string to the wire that I had brought up from the basement. And that's gonna make its way all the way down to the 
uh, bedroom. Okay, uh, <laughs> see you later. And then there, yeah, I was just uh, telling my girlfriend there, see you later. She was going on a walk somewhere out of nowhere. Well, I think she was going to, <laughs> I think she actually was, she was going shopping at Goodwill that day. So I said, okay, see you later. And um, what do we got? Okay, yeah, so I thought, now I'm thinking before it got stuck uh, going through a hole kind of on a 90 degree uh, when it was in the chimney. So I thought, okay, I don't want to pull this and then get it stuck again. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to kind of start it, the wire going through the hole and there'll be some more slack on the string on the other side. But uh, okay, so if I get the string on the other side, then I should be able to pull it and we'll see what happens. And then like the day before, I, I couldn't find, like, like I said, I just jammed a bunch of wire down there and it got hung up on something. So I was all pissed off and I was like <laughs> drilling all these holes in my wall trying to find this dumb wire hey but I got it so here we are uh, you're gonna see uh, the fruits of my labor the day before where I was just trying to f <laughs> I drilled all these holes and I just I had a, um, I had a, a circular saw not a circular saw a hole saw and uh, making a big mess with all this plaster everywhere and and you can see my beautiful hardwood floors <laughs> all scraped up but yeah, I think at some point somebody had carpet over there and then they ripped it off. So that's on the, uh, the long list of things to do is finish the floors uh, upstairs. But you can see my new outlet that I put in there. It's all grounded. And, and eventually we got a paint here. And uh, so I'll probably do, oh, what's in this hole? Hey, found the string. Easy peasy. That was like... That was not set up at all. It was that easy. But I was I wasted hours and hours the day before <laughs> jamming wire in there. And then I, I put a, uh, I grabbed a coat hanger and I was fit, trying to put the coat hanger up through the, up through the holes that I had in there. And I didn't know where in the wall that the wire was and that. Uh, so anyways, I, I, I did it the right way and I got the right results. So now we just have to chop this off. And uh, okay, so the wire is now going from the bedroom up to the attic, over to the chimney and down the chimney and into the basement. Piece of cake. And then I'm also thinking, uh, <laughs> Now, I was thinking also, like, why, why not just get, like, a Wi-Fi repeater and just do that? Well, you know, I'm kind of cheap, so it's like, ah, I just don't want to spend the money on Wi-Fi repeaters and stuff. I have wire lying around. I have, uh, you know, I just have to buy, like, a little Ethernet jack and this and that. And in the long run, a wired connection is still better than a Wi-Fi connection the it's it is the proper way to do it and uh even though it's yeah it, it's kind of a pain i'm getting ptsd just watching all this pain in the butt but yeah so here we are uh there's a little little nylon string that you can peel back in this cable and it's uh it's kind of uh, yeah i guess i didn't didn't describe that exactly right at the time but anyways we got the uh, the uh, the outer what would you call that sheath or uh, insulation I got that all off and now we have to separate all the wires that are inside there uh, and then those get attached to an RJ 45 jack or something something like that I think it's RJ 45 I hope so I'm not gonna go back and edit this this is one shot man <laughs> I'm gonna be yakking here for another hour so uh, yeah and then uh, this isn't too bad you can just kind of sit down and separate it I yeah and then there'll be like a jack so it'll kind of look like a sort of like a phone jack on the wall and I'll attach this um, this is where uh, a lot most other YouTube videos they they'll 
oh, you just have to use this punch down tool and you get these testers and all this stuff. But I didn't want to buy a uh, punch down tool. I didn't want to buy any testers. Uh, I didn't want to spend any money. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, yeah, we're getting, uh, so you'll see a little bit more, uh, the, the cheapo way of running this uh, wire. And uh, yep, there we go. And I figured I'll probably do another video on how to repair holes in walls <laughs> at some point because I got to fix these babies up. And uh, I put a new a new box for the receptacle for the uh, for the high uh, for the uh, I was gonna say hydro, but it's uh, <laughs> that, that's an Ontario thing. Uh, yeah, for the electricity, uh, for the outlet that's there. And uh, so that could probably use a little more plaster to uh, kind of neaten things up and sand it nice and then paint it. Uh, but as it is now, these holes are all blocked by, they're all blocked by that dresser that I moved away. So I kind of don't care. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got the Cat 5 or Cat 6 uh, jack. Yeah, whether it's Cat5 or Cat6 cable, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, apparently, I, I'm using Cat5 because I just had it lying around. But if I had to do it again, I'd probably buy Cat6. It's not, I don't think it's any faster or anything, but it's, um, if there's ever, you know, like an electric uh, motor, like a blower motor on your furnace or something, or uh, for electrical interference, uh, Cat6 is better to run. If you have the choice, spend the extra money, get the Cat 6. And I would. But, like I said, I'm cheap. It was lying around. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the jack. I bought that at uh, Home Hardware. And now I'm thinking, how do I attach this thing here? And what do I do? And uh, the, the little, uh, on the back, it... I figured out there's there's this little tab you can squish and it'll snap right out of that that wall plate and then it's easier to work on uh, there's uh, you'll see it if you ever buy one you, you got to squish it pretty hard but it will pop out and eventually you'll see that okay here we are back in the basement uh, what am I doing here <laughs> I don't know okay Here's my wire, and oh, that's right. Okay, so I took this. I wanted it so that I could put that plate back on it, um, and I wanted. I, I figured out that there's um, uh, that the it's not all brick on this chimney. At some point in the past, there had been uh, an exhaust, probably for. I'm guessing for like an oil furnace back in the old days uh, when the house was first built and so that looks all cement and rock solid okay I'm, I'm just pulling out a, a whole bunch of uh, wire out of the box that's still on the ground and this that has to be enough wire so they can go over to my computer uh, there we go that's all the wire I got now, but I wasn't shy on the wire. I got lots and lots of extra, so I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be uh, too short. So what I have to do now is, uh, if I want that little plate to go nice and neatly back on, uh, because the wire would keep it from closing nicely, and then there could be like some more. I guess it'd be kind of a, it'd be exposed to the outside. Yeah, there we go. That's the Cat Five box that I used. So I, uh, I found that there was a, a hole that was uh, that they put something over. I'm guessing it might be some sort of asbestos glop. <laughs> I don't know what it would be called, like asbestos and plaster. I, it was a little bit hollow, and I was like, hmm, uh, or it's some kind of mesh. Might be fiberglass, but it's probably asbestos, I think. So I just give it a pop a hole in that baby. And um, let's see if I can get the wire to come back through that hole. And then I can close up my plate uh, on the bottom. My clean out, uh, whatever, clean out plate, whatever you want to call it. And uh, 
that was the plan. So, as usual, uh, doing things the hard way, or the, the not the right way, <laughs> making mistakes and learning. Uh, so I figured, okay, I'll just get the wire, I cut it, I'll just kind of put the end of it up through, uh, like it's only, I don't know, about a foot and a half away. I made a little slit there, so I should be able to grab it with my needle nose pliers and just pull it through the hole, and then it won't be coming out that little box in the bottom. So you're going to see me, I don't know, I, I think I might block it with my body. I'm not a professional actor here. I'm <laughs> I block the uh, block the shot. Cut. No. Um, yeah, so here I'm trying to jam it up, but it keeps flopping over. And it's like, it only has to go up a foot and a half and then I can grab it. But, uh, of course, it's not going to be easy, right? Uh, I should have just done it the right way right from the beginning but oh well you know that's the one thing about whether you're a machinist or mechanic or carpenter or whatever you're doing electrician whenever you think you're gonna get lucky with something you just don't <laughs> it's like there is a there is a proper way to do it hey and then I still got my little counterweight there or not counterweight but my little fitting that was from before so I figured okay I can pop that through and I can drop that little guy down like a foot and a half, attach it, pull it back through. Uh, kind of like a little, I guess a, a little mini version of what I did before. And okay, I didn't have, my, my string was up in the attic. And so, but I did have some extra wire around. So I just chopped off a chunk of that. And I figured, okay, we got the weight, we got the wire, we'll stick it through the little hole, reattach it, pull it back up blah 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 and uh, yeah and then it's like I didn't have my electrical tape but in the basement I had some masking tape lying around so still not the best but uh, not the best uh, tools for the job but uh, good enough sometimes you don't really need the the best tools for the job all the time uh, sometimes you can uh, improvise and uh, and it works so now I'm thinking, okay, I put this here, what do I got to do? I'm confusing myself, but uh, eventually I figure it out. Uh, yeah, eventually I figure it out and I, and I go, okay, here we go. It's all taped up. I drop this down, hook that up. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And yeah, there you go. Pop it through the asbestos. And I'm not really wearing a mask or anything there because, hey, a little asbestos never killed anybody, right? And we're going to attach the wire. And I stuck it right through the, the, right through the hole. Why? I don't know. It seemed, seemed like a cool thing to do, I guess. Probably. What did I do here next? Tape it up. And, uh, yeah. And of course I'm blocking the shot. Not a pro. Not a pro. Oh boy. But you know, like I said, it's uh, before. It's uh, this was an exercise in editing, and filming, and uh, and I guess acting too. You got to be able to see what's going on. Don't block the shot. And lighting too. And uh, don't. Uh, yeah, you can see this. Um, this video quality is better than at the very beginning. So, uh, here we go. Yeah, so I just pulled it right through. I should have showed that a little better, but now I can pull all that wire through and close up my, uh, my little, what would you call that? My little clean out plate. And yankaroo, here we go. Hopefully it's not too much spaghetti on the ground and I can get it all out. And yep. Yeah. Hey, we're in business. Then another thing too I got to watch out for is that I got kind of a like a fisheye lens on this uh, GoPro camera. It makes my gut look big. Look at that gut. Hey, lay off on the potato chips, buddy. Nah. Actually, I don't eat potato chips. No, it's the shirt. Yeah, it's the, the, the shirt's just kind of puffed out funny there. 
That's no gut. All right. Did I get it? Uh, oh, it got caught up a little bit, spaghetti style. Oh, you're gonna see some really good spaghetti pretty soon too. That's uh, that's how I uh, organize all my wires behind my computer. Is it's called the spaghetti method, and you'll see a really good, um, you know, a really good uh, uh, view of the spaghetti method of organizing wires. And that should be coming up after this, because I pull this wire through, and then now uh, I don't actually show it in the video, but I run this across the uh, the floor joists uh, in the basement. And staple it all in nice. And, oh, here we go. Look at this plate. It's going to fit on there beautifully. Ta-da. We got it. Is that much neater? I think so. And that, this wire eventually. Hey, there. you know I was talking about that spaghetti method? There you go. There's the computer this is going to. And, uh, yeah, so you're going to see. This is uh, behind my computer. I had to kind of move it away. Uh, this is on the main floor now. So the wire is going underneath uh, by the floor joists, and now I have to go feed it through this uh, this hole that I drilled to get like one wire up through, but then I ended up putting a bunch more wires through it. And uh, hey, what's going on here? Something is moving. What could it possibly be? It could be. I always thought I thought this was a little funny when I when I looked at it. Uh, it's like, hey, it's like this worm coming out of the hole. Hello, I am a worm. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like I'm just pushing it up through the basement, and we're keeping everything all loosey goosey. We're not stapling anything to the walls until we figure out that the it actually works and the cable's not damaged and. Uh, on the end of this, I put a female RJ45 jack because they're easy. Uh, they're easy to. Uh, they're easier to install than the the, the male ones. You need a, spe a special tool for that. I have done it in the past, but I haven't had good luck with uh, the male end of an RJ45 uh, uh, Ethernet jack. Okay, here I'm squishing it really hard, and then I pull this. Uh, Pull the little white clippy do off of there. There we go. So the faceplate goes over there, and then we got the uh, the wires that I separated before have to get uh, punched down onto this little clip. Now this is where you would normally use a, a specific punch down tool that they sell. And uh, but the other RJ45, uh, I bought some smaller. Uh, some smaller female ends and they had a little yeah you can see it there it's orange hey it was orange uh, it was 37 cents cheaper for the orange one than a white one so I figured no one's gonna see that orange it's gonna be behind my computer and my spaghetti so uh, hey 37 cents man I bought three of them actually might need one one day so I saved a buck and uh, what do we got here? There's a little plastic tool that came with that, which I thought I, I, I had used that in the past, uh, uh, some other time before. And then so it's easy to put the female in there and then you just get a usual, your regular Joe Blow Ethernet cable that you buy wherever. And here's some instructions. And I was like, yeah, that's a lot of reading. I'll just, uh, who cares about instructions? Real men don't use instructions anyways, man. You just, like, remember the best you can. So, uh, yeah, I had done this before. And there's a way of hooking up your uh, Ethernet cables. If you get this far into your project, there's uh, there's a A and B methods of doing it. And it doesn't apparently it doesn't matter which A or B uh, method you use. Uh, as long as it's the same on both ends. So uh, behind the computer before this was done, I, uh, I I had already put on, I don't know if I did that first, I might have done that after this one. So uh, anyways, you just gotta make sure it's A on one end, A on the other end, and then it works. Uh, 
Uh, and the, the only difference is there's a couple pairs of wires that are reversed and you don't want to do that. And that's where you'd get your little testing tool to help you out. But if you just, <laughs> oh, I'll just remember it. Yeah, that's, that's a good technique. So I got all these little wires here and you put them through, I guess you can't even really see it too much, but you attach it and you, I'm going to use this little plastic tool that comes with the, uh, the female end uh, RJ45 jack. And then, uh, yeah, I'll use a little plastic thing to, you just kind of squish it in. And there, there's lots of YouTube, you know, you can see in my right hand there, I got the little plastic thing. You just kind of squish it in the best you can, and uh, it somehow it works. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, lots of YouTube videos out there on how to do this specific little technique here, and uh, I just kind of squish it in the best I can. Probably it probably would be better or easier for me to do that if it was on the floor, but uh, to be the the cinem cinematographer that I am I had to show it to you guys and so so it's a little harder yeah that's my excuse yeah that's another thing too you get really good at making excuses for things the more you work on your house so here we go squishing things oh yeah I meant for it to be like that and yeah a little squish 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 I think the, the last time I did that before was mm, years ago, maybe six years ago or so. I don't know. Actually, no, it was probably more like 10 years ago. Yeah, at one point I had to redo a whole bunch of wiring in the house. It had, uh, the house had what you call, and I still have one circuit, it's called knob and tube wiring. And uh, I replaced all that with regular Oh, just your your regular, oh, what's the official name for it? Yeah, your regular wires there. Nomex, I think it's called. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I had the ceiling all ripped apart, my living room and dining room, and while that was all ripped apart, and I ran a bunch of electrical all over the place and some, and some of this Cat5 stuff, so... Uh, if you got holes in the wall and everything's all ripped apart, that's the time to do all your major repairs. It's just like if you got uh, you got to change your timing belt in your Honda. Well, wh while you're in there, you might as well change the water pump too because it's all ripped apart. And if the water pump fails, you got to rip it all apart again. To uh, it's going to cost you more labor. So um, that's that's what I did. Uh, I had my what, what did I have? 1998. Honda Prelude, nice car, and uh, I got the timing belt changed in that, and uh, did the water pump at the same time. So here I am snipping this off, and I saw later in some other YouTube video that you can just kind of, you, you kind of twist it a little special way, and you just kind of snap these things off, you don't have to cut it. But there we go, that should work, it's all punched down, ta-da, I guess that's good enough. Now. Let's test it out. We got a brand new Ethernet cable from the store. <laughs> a store. And what else we got here? Uh, yeah, so I got my little crappy old laptop. The, the internet was always cutting out on because the Wi-Fi signal upstairs was so bad. And, it, and that, that was the real reason why I did all this crazy wiring is because I just couldn't, I, 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 it just drove me nuts for my uh, Wi-Fi just to cut out on me. But then I also wasn't sure uh, if it was my computer, uh, if it was messed up. So I thought, well, no matter what, having this here, okay, this is, this is my testing equipment. Instead of using the official testing equipment, I'm just going to hook it up to my... Uh, my laptop and so uh, it makes sure it works so there's my regular Joe Blow uh, Ethernet cable hook it up to my laptop and I think at the time I had my laptop it was on Wi-Fi mode um, so I was gonna switch it from Wi-Fi to wired and uh, oh gee what's that YouTube channel 
It looks like there's something on there. Something, it's probably an awesome YouTube channel, I'd imagine, that I was watching. I forget. And, uh, yeah, so we can... I'm uh, changing the settings to detect if... Uh, see if the wired network works. And I so I already did that little clippy thing down by the... In the... Uh, would you, on the main floor and uh, and then so we're testing it so that's another thing another thing to do if you're doing electrical or wiring or anything don't put any face plates on don't do anything until you know that your wiring's working and then you neaten it all up at the end so we're gonna keep going here with the uh, trusty old laptop here Look at that. Some guy's riding his motorcycle around in Windsor. What YouTube channel could that be? I don't know. It looks like an awesome YouTube channel. And we're going to show you here. I don't even know if you can see it, but it says wired and it's on. And I'm watching a video. Yay. Okay. What's going on next year? Okay, so now I've determined that the wiring, it, it all works. So that's a big thumbs up. That's a big, uh, a big awesome, uh, a big super awesome. <laughs> How's that? And so I figured what I'll do is wrap this all up with electrical tape. Just because, I don't know, you, you, you can, it's probably not necessary. There's a, it comes with what they call a dust cover or something like that. But I figured this is going to be in the wall. And who knows what kind of, uh, this is, it's a plaster and lath wall. So who knows what kind of plaster is going to fall in there. But yeah, if you got a nice tight connection with a bunch of electrical tape around it, it's, uh, it's always better. Or, or it can't hurt, you know, put it that way. And that's all I need is for, oh, my internet doesn't work. Oh, why? Because something fell in the wall because I didn't put electrical tape on it. So it's nice and tight, looking good. And I'll put the face plate. Uh, the face plate, I don't think I, sh I don't know if I could show it to you. Probably not. But it, uh, it does say there's an up position it'll say up or down now I have seen on some other YouTube channels where they, they put an actual uh, an actual box in the wall uh, with um, uh, it's usually usually some kind of like plastic orange box and they attach it to a stud but at this stage of the game I was like I don't care I'm just slamming it on the wall <laughs> so <coughs> Yeah, so I'm uh, just figured I'm just gonna screw it right in there. It's not the best solution, and here I waste a bunch of time too. <laughs> this is like totally wasting my time that you don't really need a. I don't know. You didn't. You don't have to do it like this. Uh, I got this. I I don't know. The machinist in me just wants to use my machinist tools <laughs> and my. Uh, I got this, uh, oh, here, I'm being all precise here. Meanwhile, the, uh, the that's all crooked anyways. It's like, oh, that's an inch. Okay, that's an inch. And then on the other side, it's like seven-eighths or something like that. It's all crooked, and the house is all crooked. Like, what do I care about this thing being level? But I don't know. It's kind of the, the, the my inner machinist says, it must be level. So, okay, we'll make it level, even though it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> so... Oh, I'll just measure it here. And as it turned out, I, I could only go so, down so far anyways because that little clippy thing on the back, it interfered, like, with the hole. So I just, yeah, well, what the heck. Uh, I, I'm looking like I'm doing a good job here, so I'll put a little mark. And if you did want to make something nice and level, that's how you do it. You uh, you get a little mark there with your pencil and then get my little machinist level and... There's a little bubble in there. Make sure the bubble is in the middle of the uh, the viewing glass. And uh, oh, this is going to be the best, the best faceplate that's going to be hidden behind a dresser. Wow. Here we go. 
And then, uh, yeah, like, and if you, you know, I got these screws out of the basement, and uh, I'm just going to go right into the plaster. But uh, if I ever take those things off again, I'll have to get longer screws because uh, it and get it into the wood or something because it's. Uh, I could tell just when I was screwing it in. It's like though this is stripping. This is like a terrible, uh, a terrible setup. But uh, you'll see it, it. It will be functional for now. But if anyone else sees that, they'll say, "What kind of a hack job is this?" and uh, the answer would be is a hack job that I just want to get the stuff finished. <laughs> and, you know, you'll find that in older houses, too, that you say, what kind of clown put this in? And it's like, oh, it was the clown that didn't want to take another trip to the hardware store or the clown that was like, uh, I just I'm so pissed off at this. I got to quit. So uh, 100 years of that in a house, you're going to find that all over the place. But uh or like even a used car. It's like a, a house is very much like a car. It's uh, you got maintenance you have to do on it. And it's uh, it doesn't necessarily go up in value. Um, so here we go. Oh yeah. So this I'll tell you the story of this little. It's a Phillips head screwdriver that was given to me by a guy named Bill Tong. And I worked with Bill at the first machine shop I ever worked at. He said, I, 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 I didn't have a, well, I forget. I had to use that for something. He was a, Bill was a uh, OD grinder. So it was like outside diameter, uh, what would you call it? Just OD grinder, cylindrical grinder. That's what it's called. And uh, yeah, and I got this toolbox and Bill said, here, have a screwdriver. I got an extra one. And I needed it for my job. And he said, oh, you can keep that. So it's got a, an actual wood handle. So I call this, uh, I call this screwdriver Woody. <laughs> so time to get old Woody out. And like it's, I don't know, just a cheap Phillips head screwdriver. But I don't know, Bill gave it to me and it's still working over after all these years. So uh, if you don't want to strip things, uh, just go kind of a quarter turn at a time. It's like, oh, that should be a little tighter. Okay, a little tighter, quarter turn, quarter turn. And then you won't be stripping the screws or bolts or anything too much. Yeah, I don't know whatever happened to the old Bill there. He had he had this piece of crap car. It was hilarious. You could He gave me a ride home once, and it's like the floorboards were just rotted right out. You could see the ground underneath, and you had to put your feet up on the on the frame of the car so, so your, uh, your feet didn't drag on the ground and uh yeah he saved a lot of money on his car though hey there we go nice all right thanks for the screwdriver bill and uh we'll plug it in see if it works yep and what else we got here uh, i don't know if i stopped the did i stop the video here not too sure Hmm. Oh, there you go. A quick thumbs up. All right. Now, what's the last, uh, what's the next little thing we got to do here? So I'm back up here. Okay. So now we know that the, uh, the ethernet is working and I got all this extra wire up in the attic cause you don't go cheap on the wire. Okay. Pull in a little bit, uh, a little, make, making sure it's snug. Yeah, that's right. So this is we're getting close to the closer to the end here, and at this point, you can see kind of on the top left, I've already stapled the Cat Five wire to uh, one of the beams there. One of the what is that rafter beam joist? Uh, anyways, and uh, oh yeah, that's another funny thing about my editing. You can see that right now that the picture looks kind of goofy on the top left and. Uh, bottom right it's, there's more black uh, there uh, it was because uh, my camera was crooked when I filmed this so the you could see the uh, the studs that are like kind of going up and down on the wall they were like some kind of bat cam angle that but it was about a three degree angle that it looked like uh, I don't know uh, the the, the, the machinist in me was just appalled at how not square it was. <laughs> so I, I also learned uh, that you can, on my 
uh, my video editing software that you can actually rotate the picture so that made it so that the studs on the wall behind my head over there they're going up straight up and down instead of being off on an angle and driving me nuts okay and I'm using a whole bunch of electrical tape here now so I am the diameter of the wire is pretty small so I figured I'll just wrap a whole bunch of electrical tape around there and then just jam it in the hole and then it would be a nice uh, uh, just jam it in the hole and it'll be like a nice uh, I don't know barrier from the outside or it just uh, I mean you could use like some spray foam or something like that maybe but uh, I didn't feel like opening up a can of spray foam and then I thought I'm using up too much tape here so I'll grab a little piece of wood a little piece of garbage over here a piece of junk and here's another little splinter of wood okay we'll just <laughs> I'll just tape that up and uh, that'll make it thicker and so I could jam it in the hole yeah there you go a little sliver of wood um, probably a hundred years old who knows yeah the, the roof originally on this house was um, cedar shake is what it's called uh, and that's the way they did all the uh, houses the roofs back then so you uh, the boards on the roof you can see there's little I guess little little slots in there, little slit slots or whatever. They're, they're not uh, flush against each other, but they didn't need to be because they were covered up with, um, with, with cedar shake originally, which are these little wedges of cedar wood. But then eventually those uh, probably got too expensive and you got to replace them every once in a while. So they put plywood over top of that and just have a regular, uh, yeah, I just have a regular shingled roof here and right by my hand you can see there's this little glass insulator thing that was hanging off of the uh, the stud that's there the wall stud uh, it was some it, it was some glass insulator thingamajiggy that was attached to a copper wire that went all the way across the top uh, of the attic and I don't know what that was for I'm thinking it was maybe for a radio antenna or an early TV antenna and you'll see later how these uh, there's it's it's attached to the stud but there was another one on there that I either threw out or it broke or it probably broke I, I don't remember throwing it out and there's another chunk of wire there and I just end up hanging uh, coiling up this uh, cat5 cable and you'll see at the end how that goes and here I am, I'm using my trusty staple gun and I'm stapling it to just to keep it out of the way. And uh, you got to be really careful with this if you're stapling your wire to the uh, studs or anywhere. It has, to be, it has to be exactly in the middle of your staple gun. Uh, because, you know, if you nick the wire, now your internet's not going to work. And I've done that before with electrical wire. Just a... Uh, uh, using one of those little hammer in clips and it just it nicked the wire and it was like oh no I gotta run this all the way through the wall again and everything and it was a pain so it's worth it to take your time be very very careful this is all dirty here <laughs> like that so uh, but yeah it's hard to use gloves sometimes even if it is dirty and uh, okay Right, little snip, little clip, and uh, here we are. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure I don't fall through the ceiling <laughs> by standing on my little two by fours that I hammered in there. And uh, I think I had to do a backhand on this one just to show off. Or maybe not that one. Some other one. I, I was doing it backhand. I was a little bit worried, but it all worked out. Internet's working fine. Okay, here we go. We got, what, another eight minutes left or something like that. And then there's spider webs I'm clearing out all over the place. And I'm like, ah, gross. Get these spider webs out of here. And then uh, I think there's, like, I even noticed there's a little hornet's nest that I knock off to. There's, like, three little hornet babies in there or something. It was, uh, did I do that already? I don't know. 
And okay, we're doing more stapling here. Exciting. Look at this. It's nothing but the best at the Super Piloters channel. Yeah, there we go. Wear your mask. Hey, what's this thing? It's a hornet's nest. Bye bye, hornets. Knock that puppy right off. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, no more uh, no more hornet's nest up there. I don't know how they got in, but they hornets like it where it's really hot. So, uh, I don't know how old that was. Might have been... That could have been a hundred-year-old hornet's nest or something. Oh, uh, well. And what do we got here? Yep, still... Oh, this is my backhand. Look at that. Backhanded stapling. Whoa, check it out. Will he nick the wire? No, nicking over here. It's awesome. Okay. And we're also, uh, yeah, just uh, this is the last little bit here, kind of stapling up. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, and if you ever do see in my attic here, some of the wood is a little bit newer. Where I got some electrical wires uh, that I hooked up to this other, uh, this other two by four. Uh, at some point, somebody uh, put some. Um, I don't know what you would call them. I guess some extra wood in there because uh, the roof was probably sagging really bad. And uh, I would guess, judging by the wood, it was maybe 30 years ago. I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. Somebody, uh, they, they did a rudimentary fixing up on the saggy roof and jacked it up and put these extra little, uh, these extra little beam, uh, little chunks of two by four to keep the roof uh going up so that's what the newer um the newer two by fours in there would be okay so here i got a whole bunch of extra wire and i'm just going to coil that up and leave it hanging because my thinking there is if the wire ever gets damaged anywhere else i don't have to ever fish it through again i can just come up here uh uncoil that stuff and just pull more wire through uh, and uh, yeah uh, that's what I figure I mean you, you can see that when uh, people are putting in um, fiber optic cable there's always a big long big long chunk at the end of the fiber, fiber optic cable that they coil up or they uh, uh, even on the poles it'll be it might be stretched from one pole to another back and forth a couple times so uh, don't go shy or don't go cheap on your wiring there we go. So it's it's kind of <laughs> sort of coiled up there. Sorry to neat, sort of neat, but no one's gonna see it anyways. And so I uh, I'm just gonna hang I'm gonna hang it on this uh, chunk of wire that was hanging off of the stud, and that used to have a glass insulator on it for some kind of thingamajig. And uh, yeah, if you got an old house, you you find all kinds of weird things that you go like, what the heck is that? Yeah. And I think that is just about it for the attic. Yeah, I guess I'm done. Looking good. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, so she's all working there. Time to go back down. Shut her down out of the attic here. And uh, that's about it. Got to crawl through the little, uh, little access hole to get back to the other... Uh, to get to the top, well, I guess the uh, the second floor of the house. Yeah, it's a. I guess you saw at the very beginning I was yakking, and you saw me crawl out of the hole at first. And so now, time to crawl back down through the hole. And uh, I'm sitting on a uh, piece of plywood that I actually nailed down there. Uh, it's very handy to have that. If that wasn't there, I like you would just be like, <laughs> I don't know, you'd be stepping through. Uh, the ceiling or something it'd be real easy to fall through the ceiling and stuff so here I am standing on a ladder and then I'm just gonna go down the ladder and uh, that's about it and you can see the uh, light switch that I put in there so you can uh, I'll be turning off the lights with my light switch and uh, very handy I got these those lights and you don't have to worry about too many uh, extension cords and stuff like that so, there we go. 
crawling back down. Time to sh close up, batten down the hatches. Here we go. And that's it. Okay. But wait, there's more. We can't just finish just like that. I got to tell you guys what I did with my wire. So you can see that uh, I put some duct tape on there. Uh, and this is the next day. And okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a little recap with the cardboard here. Okay, so I put some duct tape over that hole, across the top, and then I took that wire, and I ran it all across the joists on uh, the floor joists, and then I'll just kind of do a little recap on some on a whiteboard. No, something better, cardboard, with a red paint marker. Okay, so it's all neatened up. We're all done. We're just kind of okay. It's going from up to the attic from the bedroom over to the wall little squirrely squiggly squirrely that that coil then it goes all the way down to the basement uh, down the uh, chimney to the basement and that's where it pops out right here and uh, yeah and then we have it go up to the floor joist all the way over and uh, up again to my computer and the router and so that's uh that's how that works I'm recording right now. <laughs> and then <laughs> my girlfriend was saying something else to me i forget what she is she's saying something and i'm like hey i'm recording okay and that's it that's it that's all done Okay, there we go. The one epic movie. Now this actually took me probably, I don't know, hours and hours and hours to do. And I edited out all kinds of stuff. It would have taken me less time if I knew exactly what I was doing. But, uh, hey, now I know more. And uh, there we go. Thanks for watching.